as it relates to the game, whether it's Christian McCaffrey, Jordan Mason, Devin McCourty, Mike Florio, or the guy that was selling hot dogs last night, it didn't matter who was running the ball because they kicked the crap out of the Jets. It doesn't matter what the Jets knew or didn't know because it was going to be the same outcome because they pushed them all over the place. Here's Robert Sala after the game on the difference between the Jets and the 49ers last night. You know, they're very, very good up front. And uh, from an efficiency standpoint, they, they beat us up front, plain and simple. Very efficient on their end in terms of getting rid of the ball pretty quick. Um, never really gave us a chance. There was a lot of third and short, third and four, third and five, and uh, third and twos. And so we never really got an opportunity to get after the passer. And, um, you know, the opportunities that we did uh, get a chance to get after the passer, they, they did a good job being efficient, hitting, hitting his back foot and get rid of the football. So um, credit to them. I thought they executed very well today. I feel like offensively we did a lot of really nice things. We did, you know, it's just uh, for, especially for Aaron on his first game back, um, we'll definitely be better. Yeah, look, the good news is Aaron Rodgers got through the game. Mm-hmm. For the most part, I mean, there were moments where it was the old Aaron Rodgers, the offside, the old Green Bay thing, like you said earlier, finds Lazard for the touchdown. But I don't know whether he looked a little old or whether he looked a little rusty. I'm going to say he looked a little rusty. And why wouldn't he? He played four yeah. snaps of meaningful football since January of 2023 until he was thrown into it last night. And, and everything happens so fast for you. You, you come back from when you got to get over the hurdle first of, Am I going to get hurt again? I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. It's still a little bit in the back of your mind, a little anxiety of, all right, I'm back out here. I'm sure for him, psychologically, let's get through the first three or four plays of a game. Last year, I couldn't do that. It was so much buildup. Now I'm back in California. It's a whole 49ers thing where they could have drafted him instead of Alex Smith. All of those other things are all in his mind. And then eventually you get into the groove of the game. And then it's a reminder of, and I haven't been into the groove of a game of a game since 2022, that season. So, and then it's not like that season extended deep into the postseason. So it had been such a long time before he just got up, was able to go out there and play a full game and dig into a game and think about what happened on the last third down, what blitz package did they come with, what coverage, like all of those things, when you're trying to get over to other things, they become a second thought. But you see that back shoulder pass to Garrett Wilson right there, that was on that third drive. That was the Aaron Rodgers that we know uh, hits his back foot, drifting back a little bit, fires the ball in there. So he still has that ability. I think the biggest thing is this defense has to play a style that gets him the ball in his hands in that offense as many times as possible. I think about playing back with Tom Brady. You knew the best way to get Brady in a rhythm, it, get turnovers, get three and outs. Get the ball back to the offense because eventually if they keep getting the opportunity, they're going to find something that works and then it's going to take off. My fear right now of watching that offense was it was just way too many. Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson. Brees, Brees. All right, Wilson, Wilson, Wilson. They have to expand more. They have to get other guys involved. Lazard, I know, ends up with two touchdowns. So when you look at the stat sheet, you're like, okay, Lazard, Lazard had a pretty good game, but early in the game, they throw it to him on a third down on a second drive. He drops the ball. And then for a stretch, Aaron Rodgers was throwing the ball, I mean, exclusively to Hall or to Wilson. It felt like over and over again. So I think they want to open that up a little bit. And I think Nathaniel Hackett is going to have to do a good job with Aaron Rodgers coming together and just having a plan of how to get other guys involved. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if it's Gibson. You know, maybe short passes, bubble screens, just trying to find ways. And I thought even Braylon Allen getting in at the end of the game, the way he ran the ball, maybe it's an opportunity to get him in there, maybe some two two back sets. They're going to have to just do more because, against some of these better defenses, it's not going to be hard to just zero in on two guys and take them away and make you force, force you to throw the ball or hand the ball off to other guys. By the way, Braylon Allen, youngest player in the Super Bowl era to get a touch in an NFL game last night when he got 20 in. 20 years old. Let me ask you this, because I feel like when your defense is getting manhandled the way the Jets got manhandled last night, I can only assume it puts even greater pressure on the offense to make something happen. Like, if we're going to give up three or seven every drive, and if, you know, 
the defense is going to keep us on the sidelines waiting and waiting to get back in, it has to increase that urgency, which might cause some members of the offense to press a little bit, and that snowball just keeps rolling downhill. Of, of course. The, the pressure of, for one, as an offense, you feel how long you've, you've sat on the sideline, and then you get out there, and, you know, whether it was like the Brees Hall fumble or it was a, a three and out or something like that, and you feel like, man, we're, we're right back here, and then the defense takes the field, and it's another 10, 12, 13-play drive. The next time you get on the field, it's that kind of pressure of, we need to score. We need to either score a touchdown fast, or we need to have a long drive that, for one, gives us an opportunity to stay on the field. But secondly, our defense needs some rest. It's the first game of the season. Nobody's played a whole game throughout the whole preseason. Guys are not used to being out there going rep, rep, snap, snap, after snap. So you look at all of that, it was, it's just the formula for really bad football. You just don't want to play a game that way. I think especially the Jets. Some teams have an explosive offense where, like a Kansas City, when you play, sometimes the time of possession looks a little off. It's because they got the ball on the Miami Dolphins. They got the ball in within three plays. Tyreek Hill catches an over route, runs by everybody, and scores a touchdown. So you don't get to see it, but you see the production with points. That's also when it comes down. Like, you can't score if you don't have the ball for a lot of teams in this league. And I think for the Jets, you have to find a way. I think for one, offensively, you have to continue to believe in this defense. This defense has gotten you all the way here. They play well through some of the worst parts of your offense. You got to keep believing in them. And then they have to step up and do their part. They have a chance against Tennessee, coming off Tennessee, a game where they really dominate and probably should have beat the Bears. But turnovers changed that game. I think the defense should be kind of licking their chops, coming off a tough game of saying, all right, this is a game against a good offense and a team that played pretty well last week that we can get back in our groove, maybe get some turnovers, play good run defense, and, and kind of show what we can do. Um, but I think offensively, you got to believe in that. And, and it, you need it to come back in this second game. Like, we need to see it actually happening to believe in it. You can't just say, hey, we're going to blindly trust it's going to happen. The NFL doesn't work like that. You got to go execute getting it done, and then guys will believe in it. But I don't want to say this is a must win for the Jets, but I think this is a game you you go to Tennessee, you don't want to lose to Tennessee and then come back and have to play the Patriots on a short week who, when you look at the way they went to Cincinnati, they're on a mission to prove everybody wrong. Of You think we're just this worst roster in the NFL and we're so bad. Those guys are going to play to prove, hey, Gerard Mayo is the coach here. We wanted him to be our coach, and we're going to prove that he is a, a, a really good coach. And it looked like that in week one against Cincinnati. And again, it was four snaps last September for Aaron Rodgers. That's the only football we had seen from him since he lost his Lambeau Field finale final week of the 2022 season to the Lions to miss the playoffs. Here's Rodgers after playing his first full game with the New York Jets talking about his team's offense. I feel like we didn't have any third and 10 pluses tonight, so that's always a good thing when you look at the stat sheet, but uh, we didn't convert those third and mediums. Um, you know, we had a drop, we had a couple uh, penalties, had a bad throw, so a um, lot to correct, but overall I feel, you know, I feel good about our guys. I thought the protection was really good tonight. Um, we just were a little bit off in the in the run game, couldn't get Brees going, couldn't give him enough space, um, but a lot to build on. We expect uh, greatness when we step on the field. Um, there were moments, for sure, uh, the moments that felt really good, uh, but not sustained. You know, um, felt like if we could just get a first down, we'd be rolling. Um, and we had those three and outs, which really hurt us. But, you know, I think a lot of stuff's correctable, which is great for coaches. Um, it's frustrating for, for players because we know how close uh, we were slash are. But... No time for that. We're going to move on to Tennessee quickly, and then we got a game four days after that. So uh, this is a tough opener for us, uh, travel-wise and schedule-wise. But uh, no excuses. We got to play better. I got to play better, and, and uh, you know we'll bounce back next week. You know, unless he plays for a different team next year that plays at San Francisco, that was his final career game in that stadium. I guess he could be back there if they make it to the Super Bowl next year too whoever he plays for, Jets or someone else. But he's he's processing, I think, the finality 
He spent a lot of time thinking about it and talking about it last year. But as it relates to coming back to his home area, the team he desperately wanted to play for, the team that passed on him and went with Alex Smith, that was his last chance. And there was kind of a sense maybe he had a little something for the 49ers. But what when the best thing you can say about the offense is we didn't have many third and longer than tens. That's really stretching for a silver lining, Devin. But the interesting they were six of ten on third down. They were sixty percent. As a defense, you usually say if we can keep a team at twenty five to thirty percent, we feel pretty good defensively. They were at sixty percent. They just they didn't get enough. They didn't get enough possessions. They didn't get enough plays on offense to feel good. And then you put that with the two turnovers they had. That really lets you know. Yeah, the defense played poorly, and then the two turnovers like. You can't turn the ball over, especially against the 49ers. That team is too good to turn the ball over against. But I do. I agree with them that there were some good things that they're going to get, be able to watch and, and see like, hey, we can like we can do this. Let's go and do this better. Let's do that. But, you know, if I'm them, the biggest thing I take away is, hey, if we get in third down, we should be pretty comfortable that we can go and convert third downs if we play that way. We just need to get the ball back more. But. I do think it's interesting when I remember talking to him back in 2022, uh, we lost in Green Bay and, and, and coming on the field. And I was like, man, it's been a lot of fun playing against you in your career. You're obviously a great player. Probably the last time I get an opportunity to play against you. And I think for Aaron Rodgers, you're at that age where you do think about those things. You're not thinking about it as much coming into the game. But as that game starts to wrap up and you saw Tyrod Taylor came in for him and you're on the sideline, you do start to think about man, whatever I wanted to accomplish here, playing in my home state and, and being here and, you know, all of those things, that might not ever happen again. And I know a lot of people are like, well, he's already accomplished a lot. He's going in the Hall of Fame. He's won a Super Bowl. But there's certain things for us as players that we just enjoy getting the opportunity to do. My last year playing against the Jets, I had two interceptions. I played my high school football in New Jersey. I played college football in New Jersey. That opportunity to me was so special of being able to do that and perform at my home state and going and doing what I love to do. Well, I'm sure for Aaron Rodgers, it's not the end of the season. It's not the end all be all. But those are little things across, uh, along this journey that you have, you have in your sights and you want to do. So I agree with you of him being in that press conference and starting to actually kind of think of those kind of special moments that you're going to start to lose as the season goes on and you might not get another opportunity to do because you get to that age where the football season and, and what happens next season isn't only determined by you. It starts to be determined by your play, how you look out there. All of those things start to come in because for a good portion of our careers as players, especially if you're a great player like Aaron Rodgers, a pretty good player like me, is you know for a while, I'll be back. I will, I'll get to do that again. Barring an injury, you know but then you start to get to that latter part where it's like, I don't know if the team's going to feel quite the way that I feel about me coming back. So I definitely think he's starting to process those things and it makes it harder each time you don't perform the way you want to perform. Yeah, you rarely see a Joe Flacco who will hang around on second or third spot on a depth chart as long as he can. Yep. Once the window closes on most franchise quarterbacks for starting that's when they walk away, and usually they walk away before that window has completely closed. And with Rodgers, he's said another year or two, and I think a second year in New York is going to hinge largely on what they're able to accomplish yeah. this year. And if he plays somewhere else next year, it may it would be somewhere else, not for the New York Jets. All right, well, week one is done. The challenge for all teams, if you lost, process it and move on. If you won, don't get a big head because you could be one and one by next week at this time. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.